infrastructure review. This review is being translated in a lot of languages and we don't know yet which one, but the C3 Lingo team will be on stage and will tell us how and well, it, uh, uh, what it did. Um, I like to start, as always and every year, with the knock, right? So please, give the knock a hand. Let's spot. All right, everyone. Uh, welcome to the State of the Inter Internet Manufacturer Report. This is JC, I'm Momo, and we're going to talk to you about what we did this year for the network. So obviously, organizing a Congress is a quite tedious task. It took us about six months of pre-planning. Uh, we came in on the 15th, uh, did a fiber day, and then it took us from the 18th and will take us till tomorrow to tear everything down with like 20 to 40 people um, and we'll be busy wiping every device because that is actually what we do every year. We delete everything. There are no locks uh, leaving this building um, and this will take us probably the next 24 hours. So yeah, um, for the usual numbers. Edge capacity. This year, because you didn't use the internet last year, we only brought you 300 gigs, but that was fine as well, I suppose. We had 100 gig from HLCOM here in Leipzig, 100 gig from Deutsche Telekom, and as well as 100 gig from BKIX, uh, which we got via um, DVWDM wave uh, to Berlin. In the core, we used Juniper MX960, uh, MX480s, MX204s, and QFX10K uh, in the Yolo Colo. Uh, basically, all the halls were connected via a 200 gig link, and Yolo Colo had three times 100 gig. Uh, as probably the last five or so years, we're using ISIS and BGP uh, for our protocols of choice. And this year, we also first off rejected RPKI in invalid routes, uh, and secondly, applied for the first time uh, at Congress BCP38 ingress filtering uh, to be a good internet citizen and not to allow you to spoof IP addresses. So, yeah, that was nice. Uh, as Congress keeps on growing, we have two and a half thousand tables somewhere around the building in all the assemblies, but we only have 300 switches. So sorry uh, if you had to bring a long cable, and if you have switches spare with 10 gig uplinks and PoE Plus, feel free to donate them to us. Access and Wi-Fi, we had like 300 access switches. Uh, we are obviously again running um, Aruba Wi-Fi controllers. Uh, this year, like at camp, we had a few dot one access points, more on that later. Um, we tried to use Juniper VMX to route the Wi-Fi traffic and yeah, had quite a shitload of uh, switches, most of them from Juniper, some uh, Cisco 2960s, some brocades which are new to us, and some crappy old HP stuff which is basically configured for us to work like a brick you get from like eBay or whatnot. So yeah. Uh, we had a few incidents this year we'd like to talk about. First off, we had, I'm not sure if any of you noticed, uh, quite a lot of packet loss and uh, missing route advertisements in the Wi-Fi. This was caused by some weird Juniper VMX behavior. Uh, we couldn't figure out what it was, so we had them running in a redundant VRP setup. We shut down one of them and then it worked, so yeah, fuck redundancy. Um, there was a uh, pixel flute client which somehow messed up his IP address and uh, caused a broadcast storm which took down most parts of Halle 2. Uh, we, we found them, uh, shut it down and deployed storm control to all, an, uh, to all our access switches. Um, yeah, to the Congress motto, resource exhaustion, um, someone was running aggressive setmap scanning um, or over the whole internet, came by our Wi-Fi access controller and caused a state table exhaustion, and that brought it down. We now routed the source, and yeah, that's, this was this uh, issue. So thank you to whoever was that. And uh, in the morning of day three, we had uh, a another issue with Juniper VMX where it forgot it had a network card. Uh, we rebooted it, and everything was fine again. So yeah, some numbers. Uh, you actually managed to use more bandwidth. Thank you. but it's still only 20% of our uplink capacity. Um, so use more. 20% of that was IPv6, which is good, but could be more. Uh, we had like 11,000 clients in the Wi-Fi. 86% um, 5 gigahertz, um, 96 in a peak. Uh, we had 11, 802.11 AX clients. Uh, our favorite one was obviously the one with the uh, loveful, uh, lovely host name, I love the knock. So yeah, but that number with we have 96% 5 gigahertz obviously shows us that we are finally at the point where we can say thank you 2.4 gigahertz it was nice goodbye
Also, obviously, uh, thank you to our sponsors. We couldn't do this uh, if we would not get like 10 millions uh, of list price, obviously, equipment and loan and quite a lot of services. So give them a round of applause as well. Thank you. And obviously, NOC not only stands for Network Operation Centers, but if you extend it, it is no CO2. So we believe in green power and clean traffic, and therefore we obviously uh, see that sustainability, sustainability is a great part of our role. This is why we even use uh, old crappy HPE switches to cut our limes for our chunk, to serve your cheese boards, whatever you need. Yeah? Also... Also, we somehow estimated what our network will run us in CO2, and that was about 11 tons. We're not very good with mass, we're not very good with uh, CO2 emissions, but this was roughly what we came up with. And uh, to make Congress or the world a bit better place, we actually offset all our CO2 uh, and yeah, bought uh, 11 tons of CO2 emissions. <laughs> So yeah, and now Frederick's going to tell you how we got all those numbers. Yeah. Uh, as a good internet manufacturer, we also do monitoring a lot. And we run our own Prometheus server inside. Uh, you probably know the dashboard that we propagate all over the internet, and that's powered by Prometheus. We have an internal Grafana that is part of this whole ecosystem. And if you are a little bit of a nerd, you might have clicked on the dashboard sections and seen that there are more dashboards than this. Uh, we fill our, uh, our Prometheus with lots of different sources. We get SNMP data from, and screw SNMP, but it does a quite good job at getting all the insights we need from all the network equipment. We have node exporter influx and all that. But we get a decent amount of data from uh, everyone in the um, Congress ecosystem. And we had that at camp as well, where we got the water pressure of the showers. And uh, we get the colo power, uh, which also helps with estimating the CO2 footprint. And um, everything is being configured by Netbox. Uh, which is a tool that is an asset database. And um, yeah, as I said, we have lots of dashboards and graphs. Um, of course, the public one, where you can see lots of different things um, from everyone. This is only part of it. Uh, if you scroll down on the, uh, on the dashboard, you see a lot more. Um, but this helps everyone to have a good understanding of what it, uh, what's happening currently. And we even draw nice little Christmas trees on the Wi-Fi traffic for you. That is mostly because it's a router on a stick and we cannot measure it correctly. Um, so yeah. We have an internal dashboard which gives us a little bit of a status for build up mostly um, which switches and routers are up. And uh, that uh, gives us a very quick sight of all the devices that are out there, um, what's broken, what's not broken. We improved a little and now have alarms, so someone can look at stuff and see if things are broken, run out there and uh, fix it. Um, yeah, we also built weather maps. As you can see, that's a little bit of a mess, uh, but we couldn't do it better because um, yeah, the, the graphing library doesn't allow us to do it better. Um, if someone has a good idea to do it better in Grafana or anywhere else um, with sources from Prometheus, please come to us. We're happy to talk. Um, but this shows our core and all the links between it and uh, how much capacity is being used. Red indicates that it's used more heavily. Um, we also have that for the Yolo Colo and um, all the traffic around it as well. And yeah. Teardown starts now. Please don't touch our equipment. And if you want to come and help, uh, please come to Halle 4 and get in touch. Um, we always need helping hands, but please in an organized way. Don't disassemble switches or access points. Uh, we have lists and everything. We need to account for everything. Uh, so please come to Halle 4 if you want to help. And yeah, use more bandwidth and offset more CO2. Thank you. So, thanks a lot. Actually, because you are clearly the backbone, or one of those many backbones of the conference, um, is there any Q? Let's do Q&A for like one or two questions. Is there anyone having a question right now? Ah, someone is standing up right there. So, microphone number one, please. Hey, we've absolutely done BCB. Nira, Nira, Nira. 
What did put the thing? We've absolutely yeah. done BCP38 in previous years, by the way. Okay. Sorry for my sit-down, sorry. <laughs> oh. So I just wanted to correct the record. We've been good netizens in previous years as well. Ooh. You're right, thank you. Thanks. Was there another question or something else to correct them? Because they clearly don't know what they're doing. <laughs> yeah, feel free. Microphone number two. So if uh, 2.4 gigahertz is over, what's going to happen to all of the ESP32 uh, and various IoT devices? Are they going to have a home here next year? Uh, they'll definitely have a home, but as usual, we cannot support it as good as we can on 5 gigahertz because obviously this band is overused and yeah, not even remotely suited for that amount of clients we put on it. Uh, follow up for the ESP32. Uh, how exactly can you locate them through, through the wireless if they are lost? Well, we can't. We can basically look at which access point they are, and then if someone really would want to, we could start triangulation, but we've never done that before. So yeah, we can just pin them roughly to an access point. Maybe we can ask C3NAV <laughs> next time. So please, give the knock a hand. Thank you. So the next team up is the POC. Do we have to click this? I'm to have use more bandwidth. I'm going to try. <gasps> Thank you. Your stage. Thanks. Hi, my name is Maria. Hi, and I'm Garvin, and we are from Phone Operations Center, and we want to talk a bit about the phone infrastructure at this event. Yeah, so we arrived at day minus six and planned on uh, hacking some things and socializing and we planned a, a team event, but um, then everything was different. Yeah, then we arrived and uh, I went into the knock office and yeah, they said to me, yeah, CCL is up, internet is up, everything is just working nicely. You can start hook up your telephony system right now. And I was like, whoa, so thanks a lot, knock. Really great performance this year. We were amazed. Nobody expected that it works so well. Yeah, so we put up the first antennas and then we decided to have our team event anyway. And um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, we uh, did a lot of things. So we handed out 150 org. Uh, loan decks and we deployed 51 uh, zip telephones. We also deployed um, 67 antennas and we had a POC party on day three until 7.30 a.m. So you can see almost everything is done. I guess the remaining things are not that important. So um, this is the overview of deck coverage in um, at the event, only level zero, because otherwise I think it would be overcrowded to show, just so that you can get a rough impression on uh, how many antennas we deployed in order to give you this deck coverage that you can be reached almost everywhere in the event, um, and that you can see how our tooling looks like, where we see how good the antennas see each other, and that we can see that seamless handover works so that you can start at our desk, walk through the area, into the lounge and just continue talking. Um, and uh, oh, there are also some antennas that are outside of the building. Hmm, what could that be? That is our hotel deck. And uh, you can see a typical uh, hotel deck installation on the photo. And people got really confused about it um, because we also had um, deck uh, coverage at um, main station. Yeah, so I, I got a call roughly at 4 p.m. in the morning. And somebody told me, oh, my, my deck rang. Why? Now I need to turn it off at the night. Why did you do this? <laughs> yeah, so we also had problems. Um, we um, have a new feature since camp where you um, can see your deck devices and can assign them to your number before you even arrive. And then everything is set up and you don't have to call your token anymore. And people got really confused because they called their token anyway and it calls it's invalid. So we had to explain a lot of uh, these unaccepted, uh, unexpected simplicities to them. And then we had 
a battery issue this year. We had uh, not enough batteries and you know batteries are always empty in the phones when it's the most important. Uh, so we were thinking on what, what can we do about that? So we built a new device, that's our um, Anmelde Mikrowelle and it can also charge um, devices. So many thanks to 3C Power, uh, C3 Power, because they helped us with tooling and actually um, they have expertise to put power cables on devices like this. Thank you very much. In the last years we were often asked how expensive is your service actually? Uh, so we decided that we now provide invoices so you can see how expensive our service is. Uh, and we sent out a lot of invoices and uh, we got paid some money. But uh, as you can see on the invoices, most is sponsored by CCC. Yeah, um, people also paid uh, with Swati. It's really awesome. Yeah, and also people... So people have, have invoices on a fraction of a cent and they got quite creative on how they can pay us. So here's some more stats. We have uh, 7,473 registered uh, extensions. Oh, we didn't remove this. So we were thinking on how to compare this with things and we were looking at villages in Saarland and then we thought this is a stupid comparison but we didn't remove this. Or, hmm. <laughs> so there were 5,021 attached deck phones and uh, 3,251 concurrent deck uh, phones with a, which is um, about more than 1,000 more than last year. So thanks a lot for using decked. <laughs> yeah, we had... There were also max uh, 120 um, calls in parallel, and um, we had more than 300,000 calls in total. Um, that's also really, uh, very, really much. Um, we had uh, five eating meetings at um, Heaven, uh, at uh, Heaven eat, Angel Eating uh, Place, and um, there were an average of 42 eating meeting um, live viewers. We had two lectures, you can see them on uh, media CCCDE, and we had 23 super fast charged phones in our microwave. Like the NOC, we also had a, to deal a bit with issues during the event, and actually there were some DDoS attack on uh, our account system, and somebody configured uh, over 4,000 extensions with really stupid names. Uh, and it took us quite a while to get rid of them again cleanly from the system because the synchronization turned out to be really slow. So you can see it took us a while to get them removed again. So um, we can only say, yeah, um, I mean, you all know it, it's a hacker congress, but it's kind of stupid to hack your own infrastructure. Yeah, so uh, as, a, as a consequence of this, we only allow now only 50 extensions per, per account and per event. If you think you need more, feel, feel free to contact us if you have a valid use case. So every device has an ePi that is like a MAC address, and we ask the responsible institution to give us the manufacturer. Um, but it's, a really, uh, it's really secret, so they don't give it to us. So we ask you for help. Please enter the models of your devices for your phones, and then we can match to the ePi and get some data to build more awesome features for you. Yeah, this would really help us, and the only way for us is to crowdsource it, because it seems to be super secret, whatever. Yeah. You can find it in the Guru on the device page. Um, and there's this little pen, and if you click on it, then um, you can enter the model. Thanks up front. And yeah, that's from us, and I guess now we have a little time to ask, uh, for you to ask questions. Great. So, any questions for the POC? I don't see, are they, were they correct or do we have to, no? Okay, so, ah, someone's standing up. So microphone number one, please. 
Yes, a few years ago there was a, a translation service via DECT. Uh, might, is the capacity enough to service also this crowd? Yeah, um, the problem is that we, we switched the phone system a while ago, uh, last year at the Congress, and the old phone system had a way how we can do the translation via one, one channel, and the problem is that the new system doesn't support this. Let me say the new system doesn't support it yet. So uh, uh, have a look at our talk, uh, and then you can see that there is, there is some potential. So I see someone at microphone number three, please. And this would be the last question, because we have to hurry a bit. Uh, can I know a little bit more about the supercharging microwave? I'm confused. <laughs> Yeah, sure. You can come to our POC desk and then we answer all your questions. Oh, mystery. We can Please demonstrate. Please give the POC a hand. Thank you. So, next team is it from the GSM crew? Someone there? Ah. We have to. I see, I see some chaos possible. We have to wait one round. So, GSM guy, thank you. I'm going to. I, I'm good with the computers. I think. Yeah, I am. 42. Have fun. 23. Is it working? I, if it's working or not. One, two. Look at this. Smile. Then it looks better. 42. 23. Can you hear me? <laughs> Try this. Yeah. Eins. Try this. 423. <laughs> Maybe you have to use GSM. <laughs> what happened? Hello, hello. Ah. Here we go. Um, so, as every year, we ran our own uh, mobile phone network at the Congress using um, Osmocom open source software for 2G and 3G and open 5GS interfacing with the Osmocom HLR. And all you need to take part is a SIM card that you can buy from the POC. And um, for five euros, you get a flat rate. The price increases because we uh, have less SIM cards every year. We need to manufacture new ones. Um, you can even call outside like you can with decked phones. Um, yeah, that's you already. Yeah, hello, um, I'm Linksys. Um, so as every year for the GSM, for the GSM team, the first problem is the license. That's the first step. Usually, um, because in, in Germany, um, you have to get an official form, get the license, and but where do you get? How, what, what can you ask for, for frequencies? Because, for example, the POC, Wi-Fi, so DCT or Wi-Fi, that's just, you place it, you can use it, you're fine. But for GSM, they didn't thought about it or for 3G or 4G. So, um, yeah, this year we, we usually get the license mid of December, maybe starting of December, so it's always this late. Um, yeah, so this year we, um, we didn't got all our licenses, um, so, um, but we get some. We got 850 megahertz, which is not assigned in, in Europe because it's usually in the US only used, but we have a small hole. And um, we got this year. We got the a 4G license instead, instead of a 2G license with 10 megahertz uh, from Telefonica. Um, so thanks, Telefonica, for borrowing us the uh, spectrum. <laughs> so and uh, just a short example how the spectrum looks like. So the yellow stuff is uh, usually some somewhere behind. Actually, by the way, this microphone. It might share share the same frequency with us, but so far we haven't found any interference together um, with the with the walk. But yeah, down there you can see the small hole which we are using. Um, and because of we didn't get the 2G license there, um, we thought, okay, let's take a look. Can't we fit them both in the same frequencies? And Ah, it's not good, but you see the spike, this nice antenna on the right, that is the GSM which is sending on the same frequency. It works because they're using different codings, but I've heard from people who know more about RF, that's not the way you use it. <laughs> um, so we, 
we took some photos of our base stations. This is actually the fairy dust from the 2G base stations, so you have a look, idea what we are using here. Um, we have even more fairy dust on our 3G femto cells and uh, our 4G cells, uh, they are looking like a small toaster. Um, they are taking actually 90 watts via PoE. They have special PoE adapters. So maybe we could ask uh, if somebody can uh, do a similar adapter to get uh, even running a toaster on the line. Um, so basically for the 4G setup this year, we wasn't sure if it's stable enough or we lose all our phones to the LTE and they don't like to come back to, to, to the, um, to the 2G, 3G setup where we have voice because on LTE we don't have yet voice so you have to select them specifically to join the LTE network but uh, that worked quite fine. If you change it so your phone will register, um, everything fine there. Um, yeah, so I hand back. So the rollout this year we had voice working on day zero which is uh, new <laughs> and um, Someone even noticed on Mastodon, I saw it too. And um, we already had LTE at the CCC camp this year, but um, unfortunately we lost the crypto password, so uh, LTE rollout took a bit longer this time. Sorry. So, uh, some numbers. Uh, in total we saw just uh, about 1,100 people doing a location updating on our network and uh, 845 event phone tokens were dialed on the GSM. Uh, uh, that is 2G or 3G. And uh, there were roughly 200 phones subscribed, actively subscribed on the network at all times. And even though we basically only uh, deployed 3G nano stations in all the halls and only had two, um, two GBTSs in the, in the glass halle, uh, there were roughly more than half of all the phones were still subscribed on 2G instead of 3G. Uh, we had like 18 uh, 3G stations and only two plus one in the, in the GSM room 2G stations, so that's uh, a bit surprising. And uh, SIM cards, uh, starting from the bottom, we sold about 700 SIM cards but only saw half of them activated, which is curious. And uh, luckily most, uh, or some people, bring old SIM cards from previous years and uh, it's not so easy to get cards manufactured so we are very uh, glad for everyone who brings old SIM cards from previous events. Uh, we might even consider introducing charging phone calls for only for SIM cards that are newly bought so uh, if you want to continue calling for free, rather bring your old SIM cards. Um, so um, you see the numbers, I'm not going to go through them. And uh, you can also get the ADM, the admin keys for your SIM cards if you like to write to them. Or if you have seen the talk from LaForge, um, you might want to play with the SIM cards. Uh, we give out all the keys you want to have to play with it. So operation was mostly smooth, um, except iPhones, uh, for unknown reasons, and um, except the data service, which might even be related because maybe uh, Apple is a bit more strict on whether data service is working reliably. Um, yeah, we still had some problems in the SGSN since introducing 3G, changing between the radio access technologies is a whole new uh, uh, ball game, so there's still some bugs in there. And as you see, we had many more tickets than the POC. This is uh, actually, it's reversed uh, from the POC. The, t the done is on the left. Um, so this whole uh, bunch of stuff is done and uh, there's some backlog and cancelled and fantasy tasks and uh, worked pretty nicely. Um, yeah, are you taking over? Yeah. Oh yeah, no, this is still mine. Um, this year we actually had also a denial of service attack and um, the code was the same as previous years and we never saw this before but this year we got an, an invalid mobile identity which managed to crash our mobile switching center and uh, th thank you very much for uncovering this bug and thanks to Fixeria for fixing it on day two ever since the mobile switching center for voice 
and SMS and subscription has been running stable. Maybe some interference. Um, um, yeah, we, we covered the old phones again. So last year we couldn't support them, but we managed to implement the missing parts. Old phones could work if they support the frequencies. So that's really nice. Uh, maybe next time. Um, so, but since camp, we also did a nice angel help test, and it was really impressive to see that. We even had to add more shifts, more shifts to, we have so many um, motivated angels, so thanks everybody who, who helped us and it was really great. Thank you. Um, unfortunately, we don't have enough time for a Q&A, so please give them a hand for everything they did. Thank you. So, um, there are quite a lot of teams um, next, like I, I count at least like eight, maybe nine, so we need to speed up a bit. Our next team for now will be... Sorry. Oh, hello. We don't have working microphones. Sorry, we need to Aye. interrupt you anyway. Okay, so tell them, cows post, cows post! Sorry guys, we... Hello? Oh. Okay, let's, Sorry, guys. let's get we rid of the broken one because it, it's not working anyway, so... All right. Sorry, we are interrupting for a few minutes only. We would like to deliver a few statistics as well. So, thanks of all, we had a multiple chaos deliverers working throughout the whole Congress, 24-7 basically, delivering at the speed of chaos, as our mission statement clearly states. So, thank you, therefore, first of all, thank you very much to all of you who contributed to that. So let's have some numbers because you all love numbers, right? So we delivered um, about 3,000 external postcards. So that means with uh, like outside chaos, so to the real world or the default world as we call it, uh, we delivered those to um, over 40, uh, 42 countries all over the world. So you guys are really good connected internationally. And we also, we don't have exact numbers, but we estimate around 3,500, uh, no, 35,000 uh, internal postcards. And uh, you also use our online office uh, for a total of uh, 789 times. So that is only 15 less than camp and that was a longer event. So, uh, hey, you guys write a lot of postcards. So. As you might already know from camp, we also do have a few special services. As already on camp, we had the, um, the serving proposal, so basically a pre-assembled test, you just had to cross what to write. Uh, the postbox certification and of course the bi-directional chaos, in Germany also known as Einschreiben mit Rückschein. Wow. Yep. And uh, this time we also offered some new services. We had uh, like Sang Telegram, so Gesungenes Telegram in Deutsch. Um, we had a forever alone box for people wanting to write postcards with or exchange postcards with no idea who to write it to. We had uh, love letters, so we had some nice pre-assembled text and also a really nice selection of perfumes for scented postcards. Um, you could write some secret messages. We had some UV pens and also we had uh, some, yeah, let's say, call it, let's call it security um, because, or rather temper evidence because we had some scratch-off stickers for you. And also, we um, had over 30 new postcards designed that you could use for postcards. Short annotation, short remark. Don't have that. Short remark for the love letters and the perfumes. Well, that was kind of not really thought through. It was a bit. Um, it was fun sorting them out <laughs> and uh, stamping all of that, <laughs> smelling all the perfume all the time. Yeah, and then brushing your hands really thoroughly because, well, that stuff gets on your hands when you do that. Also for the UV pens, just a little remark, it's not a good idea to use it for addressing and the message. <laughs> you can think the rest, yeah. yeah. All right, then let me close up. We also supported Mail to Jail this year, and we had 130 letters for activists in prison, which I find really great. I think that's something we can all support, so. 
Amazing. So thank you all for this amazing event and have some fun for the rest of the Congress. House pass. So the next team is the, the VOC. Yes, you can have it. Here, the VOC. Um, we only have 20 minutes left in total for every team, so you know what to do. Hurry up. Welcome, guys. So, um, um, yeah, we don't have as many uh, statistics as usual, but we have some great stories, so we'll hurry up. Um, so, <laughs> this year in total, we covered 10 stages, apart from the uh, five stages that we do usually for Congress. We had, uh, uh, we had streams from the Critical Decentralization Cluster, Sendezentrum, Wikipaka, WG, Open Infrastructure, Orbit, Chaos West. And in total, we served 255 uh, hours and 35 minutes of total talk, uh, talk time. So, you know what to do until next Congress. And of course, sustainability was a big topic during this Congress. So um, uh, part of what we have to do is stream re-encoding. So you can uh, run, a, uh, you can watch it with uh, the VP5 codec or use it at a lower resolution. And so far, we've been using four Xeon-based uh, uh, machines and uh, two uh, desktop machines. And uh, thanks to hardware-based encoding, we now replace this with a single laptop. As you can maybe read, this is critical infrastructure now. And, um, it's, uh, and we are, for, for all the streams, for 30 uh, re-encoding streams, we are on a 45 watts power budget now. <laughs> And as an added benefit, because we also encode the master slides with hardware encoders, and hardware encoders can generally use a higher profile at, uh, uh, that allows for better quality in real time, uh, you now get a better picture as well. So, yeah. <laughs> And of course, we had some minor fuck ups. Um, this year, we thought the audio setup was a bit less complex, but like when we checked rooms, we had buzzing everywhere. So we replaced some SDI lines with fiber, and turns out buzzing goes away. Then the PA sound console had a, had a buggy Dante card, and after you rebooted them, the uh, auxiliary out to the uh, VOC cameras was muted, so that messed up a particular talk that has been redone today. But other than that, we are rather happy. Uh, and we figured that two of, uh, three of our audio mixers were actually had broken outputs. Um, I don't know how we did that, but it clearly shows that they have been used on one event or another during the last years which is actually a good thing, we may think. And um, yeah, and on the Wikipaka stage, we did not use Ansible because they were sort of a playground for us. But if you don't do things properly, well, then you run into edge cases with things. And yeah, so I need to hurry up. Um, yeah, and one uh, virtualization host suddenly started leaking memory, and so if you were affected by that during the main talk seasons in the evening, we are very sorry about that. Uh, updating the kernel helped, and we have no idea what happened. Um, yeah, and Icecast got stuck as well. Um, and some real life, um, so if you want to see talks later, that uh, may not be possible because we ran temporarily out of space. But if you watch this on Media CC CDE uh, and the talks were not yet released, we have real life integration. So the talks show up in Media CC CDE even though there's no proper release yet for your convenience. And uh, main track and assemblies are now integrated in all events. So you don't have to click through for separate events to find your favorite talk. And now I pass to Pat 
to talk about Voctomix 2. Yeah, thank you. Um, uh, okay, I have now 20 seconds, I think. Um, uh, I made a redesign of uh, Voctomix, it's now called Voc2 Mix. Uh, and uh, for Peter was uh, doing that meme uh, some weeks ago because we had to switch to Voctomix 2 and we wanted to try it in two rooms. And uh, at uh, the end of the night from day zero to one, we decided to uh, do it for every uh, stage because the old uh, solution was not working anymore. Uh, that was a little bit hot, uh, but it worked. And uh, uh, the new uh, the redesign caused a new uh, uh, UI, uh, completed with some new base features. We had have now transitions where uh, pictures are moving, and uh, we have insertions uh, for uh, for uh, blending text into the picture, and we have a new audio mixing, and we are now proper AV sync in every case, I think. And uh, some uh, Mixer Angels uh, were exploring uh, the software and uh, they found some bonus features like a random video distortion in some cases, uh, which I have to fix, I think. And the party mode where you click some buttons and they are clicking uh, without any doing of the user. And everything is flickering and they called it party mode. This is what the current uh, pipeline looks like. We have now over 200 uh, GStreamer elements uh, doing all the stuff uh, to get your pictures which you are having on the stream and in the recordings. That's it. So, and of course, uh, there were some, some issues. Um, I mean, Voctomix 2 is essentially a rewrite. Huh? Actually, we are stealing time from the other teams, so, okay, so I might call it a quit. Okay, okay, okay. So, um... <laughs> Pressure! Yes, I know, but you're not making things better. So, uh, one thing uh, to mention, uh, we, had to fi uh, we had to deploy a sweaty finger uh, fix uh, after, the first, um, after the first talk was, uh, after the first talk started. Yeah, yeah, yeah! Okay, there are your stats. Read them now. Read them now. Read them, read them, read them, read them, read them. Please give Walk a hand. Thank you. So, what's next? Next, oh, the stage manager and Herald Operations Center. I'm part of it. And we have 36 Heralds, um, every one of them very eloquent and good looking. Um, then we have 70 stage managers and stage supporters. We had 150 shows on official stages and the assemblies um, on top of it. We had one stage fright council yet for the speakers um, who took care of at least six talks. Um, and then we threw away over 100 hosting cards um, on day one only. So clearly, um, give a hand for the shock. So next is C3 Power. Your time. So my name is Arif Guy. I am from the Power Team and from the Radio Operations Center. We make the power. We load five double trucks of shit out on Sunday, the 15th. We deploy a lot of power boxes and many of cables. So we have tear down today. So every help is needed. So we have only one day to bring it back. The main thing, we had the power meter, um, what we make on the camp this year. We have two uh, nice setups on the Zauron's age, so you see the power factor is very bad. And the other one was um, the Waffle Operation Center, so you see they have a nice power factor. <laughs> so please use my OMEC device like heaters, waffle irons or something, it will be better. <laughs> We also have some, uh, we have only five here. We monitor Yolo Colo. You have on C3 PowerPoint top, we have the Grafana link, and we also link it to the main uh, Grafana to the, to the NOG. And also, nice thing, we have the lounge. So uh, I have a view here. Um, I don't know how it's. He started now, and you can see the uh, current on all three phases to the. Um, to the audio, and you can see the audio from the lounge. Yeah. 
and uh, it's very nice. Uh, I'll see you anyway. If, uh, so only singers. <laughs> Use more bus for more, more currents or uh, later we will, uh, we can uh, show you on the other side. So can please look back to the slide and go to the next slide, please. So. Even the radio team, we have 120 portable radios. We all update them to new firmware and the new programming software with a new feature is a lot more slower than the last version. Very nice. 550 bring your own device radios, five dead radios from the camp, two dead from the second IC, two dead repeaters from the camp, one dead on arrival on this stage. Three rental repeater from two companies, one we pick up in Hanover uh, just before the Congress, and even the Windows PC uh, crashed down uh, on that on arrival. So, pushing it as usual. So, the so next team. Thank you. Thank you. So, the next is the C3 subtitles. I think it's Amy and Julia. Amy, it's there or not? So, no, it's SOS. C3 SUS. SOS, it's you, okay? Okay, sorry, oh, I'm sorry, not, not the subtitles, it's, wow, sustainability. Yes. Your stage, go for it. Here, feel free. Hi, nice Hello. to meet you. Okay, hi. My name is Amy, I'm part of the C3 sustainability team. I only have four slides, so I'll be very quick. Uh, you can see the first of our uh, biggest projects was the drinking water dispensers. So for angels, we had drinking water from a dispenser rather than from bottles and they could refill their bottles. We go through some stats there. So when we started planning how difficult it was to implement it, the locations and how many volunteers, satisfaction was very high for this one. So thank you to uh, C3 Gelb who really helped to organize the water dispensers with us. We're very help uh, they were really great. Please give them a round of applause. Thank you. The next, the next one was a give and take electronic boxes. So we wanted to encourage people not to throw away their electronics. Of course, they can be recycled, so we have deployed 10 boxes. You can find them in the sticker stations, and we did this in collaboration with the hardware hacking area, thank you, and other assemblies. Oh, wow, you're really fast. Yes, I am. Okay. <laughs> Others are waiting. Okay. So the, the last one I wanted to go through, uh, we have two initiatives on this one. I'm sorry for the trashy trashy picture there. Uh, we have organic bins in the halls. It was very, very difficult to do this. Um, and, but actually it was quite satisfactory, but I would say there's room for improvement there. And there was also an initiative for recycling cigarette butts. So we, we actually had two people go around, collect your cigarette butts, and they will be recycled into ashtrays. What a success. Woo! Thank you so much to Thank everyone who collaborated with us. We couldn't do it without your help. Thank you. Your applause, please. So, Unfortunately, the C3 sign is not coming, so just take a look at those pictures while I go through them. And now the next one is C3 assemblies. Here, take this one. Thank you. Be quick. Hi, my name is Pingu. I'm here for the assemblies team. And I just want to ask, uh, give a hand, uh, who haven't found his assembly on day zero or day one? So then give a big applause to c 3 Nuff because they really helped us a lot. The c 3 Nuff, um, because without them, it wasn't uh, able to do this uh, event just for us. Because uh, for some figures, we had 490s uh, assembled to place on, on this area, which is about 35,000 square meters. We had three tables, uh, 3,000 tables all over, 2,500 in the assemblies. We had 6,000 chairs. And here, please give a big applause to the C3 uh, Möbel House, or IKEA, as you call it. Huh. Because 
because the Merbel House basically placed all the tables uh, in a magic night uh, on um, yeah, basically day minus two, and they will disappear with the help of C3 Merbel House today. Um, we assigned the last assembly on day zero at 2200, and we started our work in mid October with daily meetings, uh, with uh, weekly meetings, and yeah, as you can see, it was a lot of work. And oh, thank you, thank you. And just one thing <laughs> for tear, for tear down. Um, for tearing down the assemblies, please stack the chairs on the assembly and leave, but leave every uh, stair, uh, chair and every uh, table on the assemblies. We will get rid of them. Thanks a lot. Your applause. So, the next ones are. Les prochains, ce sont les gens de C3 Lingo. Voilà, vos tours. Hello. Sure. Schön, euch mal so zu sehen und von euch so gesehen zu werden. Wir sind die Übersetzer, wir sitzen da hinten in der Kabine drin und wir reden die ganze Zeit, ganz schnell, um den Übersetzenden auch, über den zu Übersetzenden auch, dass wir mit dem mitkommen. Wir haben alle Talks von Englisch, ins Franz äh, vom Deutschen ins Englische und andersrum übersetzt. Oh, sorry. Well, I'm, I'm also fine with that. We translated all the German talks into English, all the English talks into German. All in all, 15,000 minutes in seven different target languages. And he is from the second la language team who talks all the non English and German. Thanks. Okay, so basically, we did have some, uh, about one third of the talks were translated to French. Uh, if, if, yeah, you can read the rest. Uh, and we even have currently, exactly right now, another one which is translated into Swabian. So if you want to listen into it. Okay, so we have Chaos Process done, it's it's subtitles the, the last. Which means that if you were listening to a talk, there is a two chance out of three that it was translated not only once, but twice into either French, Spanish, Russian, or Polish. Uh, one special mention for the Russian and Polish teams, that was their first time this year. So one big round of applause for them, please. Yeah. When? When? And one more big thank uh, about for the guys who uh, bought the cough candy and the uh, cough drops in the uh, booth. That's a lifesaver. Thanks. Ah, thank you. Merci beaucoup. So, we have some uh, hard operation going on here. You have to switch it or not? Whoa, you're good with computers. <laughs> wow, he just... <laughs> so, C3 infrastructure from the subtitles, your stage. Yeah, my microphone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, thanks. Um, just, just a quick look into subtitles. So what, what do we actually do when we subtitle a talk? Well, uh, first of all, we, we take the video from the C3 walk and put it through speech recognition just to get a rough transcript that we can then give to angels to actually correct because, well, machine speech recognition doesn't work so good at all. Um, and then once we, we have a working transcript that humans have looked at, we put that through auto timing, which just takes the transcript and aligns that with the audio, and that usually works pretty well. And, well, once that is finished, then we, we actually have working subtitles, but we give them to angels for another round of review, just to fix any mistakes that got overlooked, and maybe sometimes the timing needs to be adjusted, and then when that is done, well, the subtitle is released. And actually, one of our angels uh, did a nice chart about all this process that you can see here. Um, it's also on Twitter, so thank you for that. Um, well, so no, no presentation without graphs. Um, as you can see, the, the important thing is really everything goes up and to the right. Um, on, the, on the bottom here, we have finished seconds of transcribed talks. So this is really completed subtitles here. And it starts already quite high because it includes all the congresses before. Um, then we have stuff that has been reviewed uh, in, in orange, stuff that has been timed but not reviewed yet in yellow and well transcribed but not yet uh, timed stuff in green. Um, so, uh, all in all, we had 144 distinct angels. <laughs> yeah, I, I need to hurry up. 71% um, of which took two shifts and 10% took seven or more shifts. Uh, so 433 hours of work 
for 126 hours of material. And so far we've had six releases from this Congress and then lots of hours worked. All of, all of these numbers are at least as high as last year's numbers, so good things. Um, when you have transcripts, you can do cool stuff with that. So, for example, generate word clouds to see what people like. In this case, people seem to like people and questions and time, which we don't have any here. So, um, well, how do we actually keep track of, of all these complicated stuff? Well, we use a state-of-the-art, no SQL, log-free, columnar data store, um, like many of the other teams also do. And, well, thank you all of our angels for, for your hard work. And also thanks for the heaven for, for supporting us. And then, well, if you, if you feel bored between congresses, you can still continue to work on transcripts. You have all the information here. These slides will be online. Follow us on Twitter. And thank you. Thank you. So, so please do your thing again. Like, your, your Chuck Norris thing again. Like, you do the and take your laptop. <laughs> So, this was the last one. I think we, I, I will try my best to do something like this too. Actually, I'm not good with computers, but I know someone who is and who, who takes very great care of every one of us. So, one of my highlights of every congress, feel free, the lock. Hello, I'm the stand-in for lock. As with all good projects, um, they're too busy for documentation. They're packing. So, um, Locke doesn't have anything. I'm um, more of the Department of Health and Safety again. So, for everyone, we uh, have the message from CERT that there were no work-related accidents that caused real harm. The odd broken water bottle, maybe. But uh, thank you for having built a city again, safely and uh, orderly, even with all the chaos. For the people who are driving, please, make sure that the drugs wear off and that you get some sleep. And uh, for all the people riding along, please keep the guys awake. That would be greatly appreciated. Go home safely. Thank you very much. So, so, whoa, whoa, ah, okay. So, I'm very sorry to have to rush some teams. And I'm very sorry that we don't have any time left. We are one minute over. And I promised the teardown crew to not do overtime. So please, please, give all the teams their respect and clap and tramp as loud as you can for now to finish everything they did for us, we did for them. Why are you still sitting? You have to leave. Thank you from the C3 Infrastructure Review. Goodbye.